you tell me when you're going live and I'll tweet. We have started. I stopped. I started the stream. That's what I did. You started. Oh, God. Are we on there? Are we live? Yeah, yeah it's definitely on. It says it's live. <laughs> We're here, but I don't right? see anything. I'm just waiting for the delay it's, to it's, kick it's, in. It's, it's, I mean, everyone hears you waiting for the delay then. Cause oh, it, that's it's, true. That's true. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Yeah, Welcome to Husky Radio, Husky Radio. Yeah, episode 19. 19. 19. 19. I know. 19 weeks it's of this crazy. Yeah. We've been here for way too long. Yes, we have. At this point, I don't even know why we're why we're doing this anymore. We should just call it quits <laughs> while we're ahead because we're destroying the podcast game. Oh, uh, yeah. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to Husky Radio. Episode 19, we've got a lot of things to talk to you about today, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we've got Christmas-themed things to chat about. We have a terrible Christmas movie to talk about. We've got Christmas music yes. to talk about. We've got Christmas movies to talk about. We've got um, so we've much got, Christmas. It's it's insane how much it's we have be to a talk about. Holly Jolly nightmare is what it's going to be i think i think that's correct a holly jolly nightmare would be a the exact holly way jolly podcast it's the <laughs> worst one of the year that's exactly right <laughs> we have uh yes uh, as the chat is saying we have a horrible christmas movie to talk about uh we have uh some husky raid news to chat about it's been a busy week for husky raid oh yeah uh, we can say, busy, yeah. busy. It's been busy. It, don't look at me like that, Kyle. It's been busy for Husky no, Raid. It's been busy. I know. It's, yeah. oh, it's been busy. I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> revealing. I'm revealing season three of Destiny Cops today. It's, <gasps> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> season three. Not even true. Not even Not true. true. I'm just all. messing with these guys. Yes. Uh, let's see. I feel like we've got a few other things to talk about. So, uh, so we, we don't run out of time. The, before we dive we, into the Christmas. Before we're diving in. There's yeah, we're not going to dive into the Christmas right oh, away. We're going no, to right no. tiptoe in with something that I associate with Christmas pretty heavily, actually. Which oh, is Star what? Wars. Star Wars, of course. Star Wars. Star Wars. Very Christmassy. It's not Very Christmassy, Christmassy, but it's like it's just a movie that I always end up watching around Christmas time. It's kind of like Harry game. Potter yeah. or something. Like I feel like I'm always watching like Harry Potter. Around I, th- Christmas I think that's something. true. Now I yeah. do want to I do want to cut you guys off just real quick because we got to clarify uh, before we jump into the chat. This uh, just. For those of you who are listening to us and following us live and uh, and you know chatting, please obviously have fun in the chat. Uh, you know, be nice to each other. But <laughs> we don't typically answer too many questions during the chat. It'll we save some time at the end to answer yes. your questions. Save your questions. So for if the you end guys the have questions for us about anything, and we can even go back to topics, all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, please save them to the end because honestly. The three of us are probably not going to look at the chat too much, other than you know to make sure that you guys aren't spamming uh, spamming emotes and calling each other names and things like that. Tyler, is this how you teach? Like when you give a lecture at school, this is you say exactly no, how I no teach. questions till the end. You know, yes. You just um, throw no. I want them to. I, I typically want them to interrupt me because otherwise I will ignore them. Like if there's just a hand up, <laughs> I'm going to ignore it for a while. Uh, so they have to Classic. go, Mister A. Mr. A, uh, Mr. A. Blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, shut up, sit down. <laughs> sit down. Yeah. Now can I get back to talking about Star Wars? Yes. Jeez. I would like to hear about Rogue Jeez. One. Rogue One. Because I have I... not seen it, and you guys have. So tell yes, me all yeah. about it. Rogue we have. It's it's a it's a Star Wars movie, and it's okay. Yeah, I would say <laughs> it's good. I'd say it's good. Um, I would not, but you know that, that's the difference. Not gonna say I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's great, but I think they succeeded at making a fun Star Wars movie that felt different. But it felt very different. They're on very, the, very different. On the, I mean, if we're comparing all the the prequels of the series, this is a very strong prequel compared to. Uh, the yes, ones. so <laughs> it kind of outshines those three for sure. It, In uh, what way? I mean, what what lets it stand out it's just well it, well the the people talk like people so it's better than the the previous prequels yes. <laughs> okay like they All sound right. like people it's not a gigantic cgi just cluster bomb of nonsense yeah. uh That's yes and it has some good original ideas i i just don't think it's a great movie because it had some pacing issues in the beginning some of the characters are underdeveloped even though they're kind of cool and just okay. like overall like it just 
it didn't really feel like it was coming together and like a strong focused movie until like the last 30 minutes. I'd say the last yeah. 30 minutes are great. And Everyone talks about the last like, 30 minutes okay. of this movie, which yeah, I think yeah. it's a very, it's very worth it to see the movie because of those last 30 minutes. Just the last yes. 40 I hear, last Scott, minutes. Yeah. Everybody who I hear praises it. Yeah. They're always talking about like a few things from the last minutes of the film. I never hear anybody be like, didn't you love it when they were in that city with yeah. <laughs> where the two guys met, like in the reactor room or whatever, yeah. what was going on there? It's like, yeah, yeah that was kind of. Cool. I've even heard it's you know people say it's boring the first half of it or whatever, but I think it. I, I'm not Interesting. someone who's really that bored by movies, so I don't really like agree with that as much. But I think like what like Scott said, some characters you just wanted more development on, but there were some characters that were really lovable in the movie, and like I think I might have cried when the droid K two. Wait, died. don't spoil. Oh, you so. spoiled it. I was trying oh. to keep it spoiler free. Spoiler Goodness free. Gracious. Yeah. Whoops. Ruined. That sucks for you people who haven't seen it. Oopsie. I mean, how much can you spoil a movie where you know they're all gonna die? Well, anyway? You don't know they're all you don't know that's more spoilers. You don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you did not know that going in. That's all like good. Oh, no. uh, unbelievable. Oh, I don't know. No. I mean, me and my wife were saying, Carrie, like we were saying, some people were saying, "Don't spoil the movie." We're like, "What spoilers? Do, like, what? What are you talking yeah. about? You know, well, there's not there's spoilers to spoiler. say. Saying a character dies who maybe just hasn't come back, like they could still come back in episode eight, an old person makeup for all I know, or there could be a sequel to this movie about what they were doing during episode five. Saying they all die is a spoiler. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> to me, I think you can't spoil the plot. You can't like everybody the knows. Obviously, there. the there's a so. death. There is a Death Star, and it's that's and they're trying to stop it from being built. That's but I don't know. Uh, spoilers: The Ewoks were behind it all. I don't the know. Ewoks. There you go. That settles it. And now I really want to see the movie because yes. I wasn't planning on it. Because uh, overall, just, it's but now worth, I know it's worth seeing at least once. That's in all. theaters or like Redbox or yeah, I think I think a Star Wars movie is always going to be better in theaters. Okay. Yes, so, I am a I strong agree. proponent of theaters. My theater I saw it in was awful. They were kids that were kicking. Oh no, wait, no, that, that was a different movie. But <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that oh, was good. a good movie. Perfect. But it was a That's good my theater general experience. theater experience. I'm yeah. always getting kicked, sand in my face by a big bully, <laughs> and then I go and lift weights and come back and I beat him up. And that reference went over everyone's head in the chat. I guarantee it. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, anything well, there we are, anything so. to add? Anything to add about Star Wars? I mean, it, does this make you more excited, less excited for things moving forward? Apparently, Darth Vader's a dad pun guy. Likes to uh, get punts out. So. Yes. <laughs> that makes me that. <laughs> That's bad. I hated that part. But um, oh, as no. far as what it does for me thinking about Star Wars in the future, it... I'm just hoping that we don't get Star Wars fatigue soon because like that's that was going to be my next question. We've got another movie coming up next year. Uh-huh. Right. And then the year after that, we have our Han Solo Lando movie. Yes. Uh, you know, so there's that. Any any feelings toward those or are, are they separate enough that it doesn't really matter? It I, doesn't make a difference. As long as they stop making episodic entries for a for at least like five years after episode nine, I don't think I'll get tired of star Wars because okay. even if rogue one was terrible and it was the worst thing ever, I would just be like, it's not an episodic entry. So it doesn't really matter. It to doesn't me. really count that much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's a spinoff. So it can't really bum me out too much. I can always and- skip spinoffs, but I'll never skip an episodic one. And I don't want to get tired of episodic ones. And this movie, you can, you definitely know. This is no Force Awakens, you know. This is no, yeah. this is no episodic entry. This is no. definitely a side story that you can enjoy. And mm-hmm. it's more like an expanded universe, like novelization. Like you could, if you really love Star Wars, you know, dive into it. But it's not necessary. Is how I feel. <laughs> very, okay. Okay. Some of the tie-ins to the series are very satisfying. I think. Yeah, that's good. So, that's yeah, good. Very, very and, and I would hope for some fan service, I would think. Uh, yeah, I know I'm very some fan service. <laughs> I know I'm very excited for the Han Solo movie, particularly for uh, Donald Glover as Lando yeah. Calrissian. I, I think that's yeah. probably the only reason I'm excited for this movie, honestly. Um, love Billy D, but 
Donald Glover is where it's at. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, anything else from this week, gentlemen, that you saw that you particularly need to shout out or mention? I don't know when it came out, but I just want to shout out the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer that you didn't love, Tyler, yeah. but I did because I love Spider-Man. So I'm excited for that. That's all I have to say about it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I mean, to defend myself, I have I have been Spider-Maned out at this point. I am I am just done. There have been so many movies that, to me, to keep going is just silly because I know they're only going to keep going just so they can kind of renew their license on it and i'm i'm just i'm done i'm bored it's it's not a new story for me (laughs) (laughs) it's that face andrew garfield (laughs) andrew garfield those movies those amazing spider-man movies those were those were pretty pretty awful entries pretty bad yes (laughs) spider-man universe it is good it is refreshing to see this new trailer as being something that looks like it'll be better than those. It has Robert Downey Jr. in it, so it can't. I mean, it can't be. It can't be a flop with him in it, at least. So yeah, I mean, I do like him. I like him much better. I, I really liked him uh, in Civil War. I thought he was really good. So I don't have a problem there. It's Spider Man as its own franchise to me. Lackluster. It doesn't I, do anything for me. I mean, I feel that way about Batman, so that's all I have I, to say. I, I would I would agree in general. I, I would agree. Just, not gonna lie. So that's just I I have had enough <laughs> of him. I just Spider Man is the best superhero, and a good incarnation of him is perfect. That's all I have to say. Right. I actually all see right. something in the chat for you, Tyler, which is the Blade Runner oh, remake no. ad came out, and it looks Ooh. good. Oh, I can't believe you looked at the chat because I could. I could talk for three hours on the Blade Runner sequel. It's not. <laughs> it's not a remake. It's not a remake. Oh, it is it's a, a that's sequel. right. It is a sequel. Equal. Uh, by sequel, this you mean the sequel. Hollywood I soft so reboot excited. type of sequel, where it's really just a remake, but they make it a sequel. I, I am fearful of that. I am fearful of that. But who's on the team? Everyone they've got involved uh, in in the director. Uh, the people writing, even the cinematographer, I'm excited for. I mean, um, I was looking at, uh, to just prove how much of a nerd, I googled who is writing the score for Blade Runner 2049 because these are the things I need to know. Um, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I keep a, a printed copy of this uh, screenplay in my desk. It's just, it's it's my favorite movie. It's my favorite sci-fi movie, and it might be my favorite movie. Uh, I own every version of it and i've watched it many many times i love it it's great it's fantastic um based off of an excellent short story (laughs) it really it's okay it's it's nerdy it it, i will agree with that it is nerdy but it is fantastic (laughs) it is so good and so i'm extremely excited for a sequel that from what i have read sounds like it will be not a direct sequel, but an in the future sort of sequel where Harrison Ford's uh, character Rick Deckard is involved, but he's not majorly involved, which is exciting to me just because everything that Harrison Ford has done lately, he just kind of, I don't know, throws in the towel. He's like, I'm here, I'm Harrison Ford, I'm, but I'll, I'll do this role. Pay but, me all but the pay money. Me. And, um, he's super no, old, yeah. so I mean, what do you <laughs> expect? Well, and and hopefully that that is explained for a multitude of reasons. Um, but I would really, really hope, just because of what I read, that he's not in a majority of the movie. That's nothing against him per se, but more against that that character doesn't need a whole lot more of involvement. Um, and Ryan Gosling even said that they'd been filming for months before. Harrison Ford even showed up. So that's, to me, exciting. Um, Jared Leto's in it. I I'm, can only assume that he's going to play the really like good-looking uh, replicant. Uh, Dave Bautista is obviously going to play like the muscle replicant. I mean, we're going to get you know, some, of, some very similarities. He'll be the, uh, you know, the, the kind of replicant that just beats people up. I'm just going to... I'm making assumptions, obviously. I know nothing because there's, they're being so secretive. But I am super excited. Super Good. excited. Speaking super duper. Of super amazing duper. films that we're yeah. all super excited about and in love with. 
Oh, Should yes. we talk about all American Christmas Carol? All I think American we have to. Christmas Carol. I think our, we have to. Our terrible Christmas movie Tuesday pick, mm-hmm. which for those listening who don't know, every week Kyle gives us an awful Christmas movie leading yes. up to Christmas, and we all watch it and discuss it. Yeah, so we started with uh, the 12 dates of Christmas, and yes. that was... You know that that was pretty bad, but it had some redeeming qualities to it. We, it I don't think we yes. absolutely hated it. Um, certainly, it was fun to chat parts about. Were it was interesting, you know. There, there were some parts, and you're like, "What's what's going to happen? What's going to happen?" But it was, you know, obviously the twelve dates of Christmas. You knew that there were twelve moments coming up. Yes. Um, you know, it kind of had a, a Groundhog Day sort of vibe. So we we gave it. You know, it's it's okay, but it really isn't any good. Yes. Uh, and then last week, Kyle cursed us with Merry Christmas. And for that, I will never forgive him. <laughs> yes. The worst, oh, the worst Christmas. thing ever done by a human. Merry Christmas. A beautiful, yeah. a beautiful title that would lead you to believe more beautiful puns were on the way. <laughs> there, were, there were no puns in that movie. Whoever wrote all... the title, like, could not have written the film because the title is more interesting than anything in the movie. It's like oh, yeah. the classic, like, oh, yeah. bit. Like the guy was working on editing or something. He's like, "Hey, look what I named it." And the guy, "Hey, come over here." And they're <laughs> like, here, "Yeah." This out. They're like, the boss is over. He's like, "Yeah, I like that." And he walks away. Oh, and you're oh like, gosh. Okay, I guess that's the title. Merry Christmas. But it's it's so so it was so so bad. And so I did not think like I I, I don't know. I just thought it can't get worse. And and this week's All American Christmas. Carol, All American Christmas Carol. That's very important that you know that it's got Christmas Carol in the title because it's another Christmas Carol story. Scott, would yes. you like to break this one down for us? Have you ever seen a Christmas <laughs> Carol? And I have. have you ever seen a trailer park with a dumpster fire <laughs> as the source of heat for the whole trailer park? Combine those two ideas together and you have... All American Christmas Carol, mm-hmm. a film about a trailer trash mom who doesn't give her kids enough attention and who's super selfish. And so she is visited by three ghosts for some reason that are kind of <laughs> tangentially related to her life. Uh, yes. And then yeah. she learns to not be a bad mom who yeah. do- who chooses to sleep with random men on motorcycles instead of going to her kids' <laughs> plays. Yep, oh, that's my it. goodness. I... Yeah, uh, Kyle, I have to ask, why why this one? Why did you pick this one? Um, you know, I was looking through Netflix and searching various Christmas phrases to get the bad ones to show up because sometimes they don't give you all the all the Christmas movies they have. If you just put Christmas for some reason, you have to right. add, like, whatever. So I think this was Christmas comedy, and this one popped up, and the, 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 the um, description was just so capturing that I was like, this, I, want, I need to see this movie. And <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. No, no, really I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it, it like, it, honestly, I would, I would give it a, a couple of things. There were a couple of things it had going for it. I mean, obviously to me, if you're redoing the Christmas Carol archetype over and over and over, we have an issue. We have an issue. That's a problem. Um, it didn't add anything new there, but, but, the message was decent, and there were some good actors and actresses. I mean, all around. Yeah, it was. It was the acting. I was expecting like the worst acting ever, and the acting was good. You know, yeah. That it's for like, some of them, for it's some like a, of them. Yeah, for some. I mean, it wasn't everybody, but like, I just I wanted the movie to be like watching the movie. I just kept wanting it to be better, and it, it just didn't get there. No, better. this is a. <laughs> this was like. Not American Pie, like the main series movie quality, but like a spinoff, like American yeah. Pie Band Camp. One of those ones that you only right. ever saw on TBS, like late at night. Like I would completely agree with that. It's that quality. Like I, it could just be because of the absolute garbage fest that was Merry Christmas. Yeah, we're raising our more, standards. We're ra- so we're like, this is a masterpiece. Yeah. A yeah. This masterpiece. Is a masterpiece. Like, this was just like a like a mediocre movie that had some really bad parts and some okay parts yeah, that then like, had a, yeah. a Christmas shell wrapped around it. Yeah. I completely agree. And and the there were some kid actors and they were 
good, not great, but you you always have that with kid actors. Um, it had a it had a good. I, as soon as I saw Meatloaf a day in the yeah, in the meatloaf. opening credits, oh, I meatloaf. knew meatloaf I'm sitting the there, movie, yep. the edge of my seat, just waiting for Meatloaf to show up. All the um, kids and, really know who Meatloaf is and respond to Meatloaf. Of course, I'm sure yeah, they're like meatloaf, meatloaf for sure. Meatloaf, I, I love Meatloaf. Bad Out of Hell is one of the greatest albums of all time. Go listen to it because it's fantastic. <laughs> greatest, it might be the greatest concept album. Right after Pink Floyd's The Wall, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just, Ooh, there it is. I'm just gonna say it. It's up there. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> the movie I'm gained. Writing. The movie gained a lot of points <laughs> for me personally when the mom from Christmas Vacation and the other vacation movies showed up. And I think it movie. lost points so, for me because it lost bummed me. Points. It bummed me out to see her <laughs> looking like that. See, yeah, because I it took me a while. Like, I didn't see. I didn't get it the first scene, like when she's in the hair salon. Yeah. But, but when you see her in the park in the in the trailer with Meatloaf, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, "Wait, that's her, isn't it? She's really old." Yes, that's that's her. Yep, that's her. Yep. <laughs> and so I like that oh. actress. But... It just pulled um, me out because I don't feel like they had to put any makeup on her to make her look I gross. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "No." Oh, no, you turned out. Okay. I was, you know, it was a Christmas Carol is a is a pretty deep story, right? Scrooge Scrooge is very selfish, almost egomaniacal. Like like mm-hmm. he's he's borderline evil. I mean he's he's totally a dick. But yeah. she had a few redeeming qualities. She knew that she was a bad mother and she tried to make promises. Oh, I'll be there, oh, I'll be there. But she knows, I think, and I think Scott, you mentioned this, we know that she cannot meet those promises. And so yes. she's just always letting you down. Whereas Scrooge you get that kind of automatic like, man, this guy sucks. And so his kind of come to Jesus moment, we could call it, is <laughs> is is uh, revelating. I mean, it's something yeah. it's something completely out of the ordinary where you see the good in her and you're like, okay, I see exactly where this is yes. going from minute two. You know where it's going. When an old lady walks up and says, I wish you would have opened up your hair salon like your mama <laughs> yeah you know where it's going you know where it's there going. is no surprise anymore i would have liked honestly th- less forced comedy don't force the comedy it was so ham-fisted that that it just was unnecessary the, I honestly the tra- one thing i'll say about that is i could have had rat tail randy in the entire movie i could have <laughs> oh rat, rat tail <laughs> randy rat tail randy wins yeah. points wins <laughs> points because he's like nicknames are cool and you're like thanks rat tail randy yeah. Like that's, oh, um, but it had, I just wish it would have been, it could have been dark, you know, it could have, you remove all comedy and make it a really like depressing piece. Oh that's, yeah. That's like what, commenting, that's what that's, yeah, that's commenting what on poverty needed a more in America. grueling, realistic take. That's what I want. Po- poor life. Ugh. That's what I want. Real. Oh, that overall, would have been so much better. What do you give it out of 10 overall? Out of 10 overall, I give it a, a like a real solid 6.2. You guys are oof. You guys are more generous you, I, than me. Well, hey, I'm, I didn't I'm say a harsh critic. critic. I didn't even say I a honestly number right. I didn't no, even no, say no. a number yet. That's fine. I just assume that you're going to be more generous. Oh, people are usually more generous than me. <laughs> I give it a 4.7. Okay. All right. 4. I would and, give it and, and here's one thing, here's one thing I want to say about the end that I liked that get that Oh, the that, ending was the whole. The what I liked, the one thing about that the is. ending, she's dating this guy this whole time who thinks he loves oh, her okay and she doesn't yes. care about him at all yes and then at the end you know i, I was kind of expecting her to still to be like oh this guy is good i should stay with him and yeah. instead she's like get out of my life i am a horrible terrible person here's <laughs> all the money you spent on me go to college I love that. and i was like oh she, that, so was she that was a good redeeming moment and that gave me a a little bump up yeah on the scale no i think that's a really good point but, that is that was the best moment um, as soon as they started this little like uh, makeover scene with one of the young kids who gets beat up, he's, he's you know, our Timmy. Um, yeah. he, I was like, oh, crap, it's going to be a makeover. This is going to be terrible. Uh, but when she did that, redeeming, redemption to me, that redeemed a little bit. But I, I'm still going to I'm going to stick with my 6.2. Kyle gives it a 4.7. Scott? I'll give it a 4.5. That's that's what I was going to settle on before Kyle said 4.7, just because I like a nice okay. round number. I, it yeah. did have redeeming moments, but it had so many jokes that just were offensively not funny to me. Like, not that they it were just, offensive, just like, like, this isn't funny. 
they never hit for me. They never hit cringe level or anything. It was just like I, that, no, that was a, a I, that was a joke. You know, I and, I, I yeah. cringed. <laughs> I don't know. I cringed at the uh, when the Ghost of Christmas Past showed up and they talked about the donkey. Oh stuff. my gosh! Yes, yeah, so I was just like, uh, what's what is happening right now? She had a, she well, died by having a don like an incident with a donkey, and she <laughs> yeah, gets all we, like, like that's it. Uh, that's uh, all you yeah. know. So yeah. we can assume that it was not a good experience. Um, and and there were there were they they could have gone overboard with the trailer park jokes. Um, and I thought there was one moment that that oh come on like that's just yeah where where Randy Rattail Randy comes back and checks out his own daughter that was uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah um, that was. But that's very... but there are plenty of moments that that you just kind of go oh no. Um, and, and so to me, you take all of that out. And you you give it a little more of a serious, still a Christmas Carol vibe, but a little bit more serious, and then a heartwarming ending. I think you could you could have a solid seven point nine movie. You take it from a six point seven to a seven point nine, real easily. If, right, I, wrote, right, if right. I wrote if I wrote it, really geez. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. so now that we're, mm-hmm. we've yeah. assessed our that terrible okay. movie, how about we talk about good Christmas movies? Yes. Good Christmas, Christmas movies. movies. I like have that. A discussion of the best. Christmas movie, the best Christmas movie. ever made. Mm-hmm. All right, that's, all right, that's it. That's the topic. That's, and I and this is one that I don't think any of us have talked about. We we may have mentioned oh. it, um, but I don't think any of us have talked about. So there could potentially be some overlap. We oh. haven't had that problem before. But um, who would like to start? I'll start. All right, Kyle. I'll Kyle go will for start. It. My movie features an actress who is. In a movie we just talked about, the All American Christmas Tale, Carol. Excuse me. Oh, thank God you almost got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. The Christmas Corral. Christmas Vacation. There it is. Okay. Put it out there. Definitely my favorite Christmas movie. I never would. And guessed. I think it is the greatest Christmas movie of all time. Of all time. Num- number one reason. Because it's hilarious. That it has yep. to be the yep. number one reason for me. Because it is so freaking funny, so classically funny. So many instances of hilarity and scenes that are just classic. When you think about like I don't know, classic humor, kind of like slapstick stuff. Chevy Chase, you know. Chevy Chase is fantastic. This is this is probably it is my favorite movie with him in it. Christmas Vacation, um, yeah. but. The reason why I think it is the best Christmas movie is because it captures so much of the Christmas experience of trying to have family over the stress of Christmas. And it makes light of all of it. Of And it starts when they're trying to find a tree with the family. There's family issues. All these things happen. The Christmas experience is awful for this family. At the end, they all come together in a ridiculous kind of moment where his boss gets kidnapped by Cousin Eddie. And yeah, and somehow that the boss decides to give him a huge Christmas bonus because of it. And you're like, sweet. (laughs) But it is just a fun, good movie that captures the essence of Christmas as an adult. Now, there are other the other movie I think captures Christmas is a Christmas story. But that is the I would argue that's the kids experience, which is nice and nostalgic. This is more what an adult feels during Christmas. And I'm going to need so, you to. How do you know what an adult feels like during Christmas? I'm going to need you to not talk about that movie because it's the greatest Christmas movie of all time. Oh, is that, is so, that yeah. Tyler's segue? I'm going to need you to stick I won't, on your I won't side. St- I won't. I won't. And talk I'll, about I'll Christmas stay on my side. vacation. Okay. <laughs> but it is a movie that is just near and dear to my heart. Um, Chevy Chase is wonderful. And then, of course, Cousin Eddie, played by Randy Quaid. Who has recently made his way back to the United States? Did I he? Believe. He crossed the. Did he cross the? Oh, yeah, right. I, feel, I believe it was I what was a year ago worried. or something. I think it was like oh, yeah. a year, no. maybe more yeah, than a year no, ago. That's true. But, I was getting worried. I but he was, you know, he was long. like, he was like not allowed back in the United States, but he has. I think he is back in the United States, probably illegally. Canada. Let's get real. Yeah, something. I think he was pardoned. I don't really know the whole story. Something about home ownership or something, but he's. Yeah. Uh, He's back, and it is my family, my dad's side of the family's favorite movie. The man, the man right, saved us right. from aliens. He should be allowed back in. <laughs> yeah, he us. should. That's he a should. Should. respectable answer from Kyle. I, uh, I incorrect, was, but let's move I was on. Incorrect. It is, it is no surprise. 
There's no surprise that. there. No. Um, no, Christmas Vacation is a is a fine movie. It's fantastic. Is it Chevy Chase's best work? By f- no, no, it's not. Um, it's but, not even personally my favorite vacation movie. But that's <laughs> just, uh, that's there's just something me. to be said for that as well. Um, but it's a solid choice of of it is. a Christmas. It's movie. a solid. And as movie. soon as as soon as you said that, Kyle, it got me thinking of Krampus, which is <laughs> basically a Christmas vacation but horror movie version and i love it for that i mean it's almost like a shot for shot remake of the first half of a christmas vacation it's it's great um but i did not pick krampus although it is a fine movie um i did pick no you mentioned it uh a Chris the christmas story i love that movie uh it's been you know family tradition for for years and years much like you know a christmas vacation is for you um i love a christmas story because i'm a midwestern boy born and raised just like <laughs> Just like the writer of the movie, who well, yes. he wrote the book and then the movie was made, but uh, and he does the he does the narration for the entire movie. Um, and to me, even though I didn't grow up, you know, in the forties and fifties when he did, um, I feel like I can still connect to it because Midwestern winters are hell; they're awful. I think I think uh, winter in the suburbs is just about the worst thing that I can imagine. And and this movie describes that. But you know what else sucks? Growing up. And this movie talks about that. You've got bullies. You know what else sucks? Advertisement. And this movie talks about that. Because he has his little orphan nanny Dakota ring. And all it says is, be sure to drink your, uh, drink your Ovaltine. And that's BS. Advertisement, always getting you. Um, but it really, it's got that, that family message that much like, much like Kyle's movie, you know, that kind of disjointed family where we can maybe all come together at the end. Uh, this has that. And I like this. Um, but I always felt that a Christmas story was actually just a bunch of mini stories. And I really like that. They're like mini episodes around the Christmas season. And I really like that. Um, and a red rider BB gun is all I ever want for Christmas. <laughs> well, a very respectable answer and a classic. My wife's favorite film of all time, might I add. There we she go. watches A Christmas Story literally year round. I will walk into the room <laughs> and she'll just have it on. Like, Are you watching this damn movie again? And she's like, Shut There are up. so many good moments in that movie. It's and a I great love movie. it. And I, I can't love put that my movie. Arms down. Come on. And, it's and, so good. And you and Kyle have both picked fine classic examples of movies that encapsulate. That's right. The, the feeling of what it's like around Christmas time. Yeah. But for me, you can't go any more classic than <laughs> the granddaddy of all Christmas movies to me. The one that is the epitome of a classic Christmas movie, which is It's a Wonderful Life, which is barely a Christmas movie so, in, in many ways. Barely, but, yes. Is a good barely, way to put listen, it. Barely. listen. <laughs> but what it comes down to, the most important part of a Christmas the movie most- to me, isn't that it encapsulates the experience of Christmas time, because I know what Christmas time is like. I live it every year. It's about the message, and no movie more strongly captures the message of Christmas, of being appreciative of those you have around you, and not worrying about the material items than it's a wonderful life. It is. Right. I'll, I'll give it that is, to you. For its age, especially, it's one of the finest films ever made. The acting in it is all top notch. All of the characters feel real and connected. And you you see this character go through all these hardships in life, and it focuses so much on them. It's something we can all get stuck in. We focus on the bad things that happen in our lives, and we. We can't let them go, and we don't see what's right in front of us. But that's what's great about the movie is that he learns throughout the course of the film that even though there's a lot of bad things that have happened to him, he's also accumulated this wonderful family and friends and a whole town that cares about him. And everything he's done has made him the person that he is. And it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful a movie. I have a problem with this movie. Oh, okay. okay. Hit me Here's with what, your problem. Let me Tell say what I problem. don't have a problem with. It. Here's what I don't have a problem with. The message at the end, great message. <laughs> Everything you said, it's good. I love that message. Great message. Yeah. Um, I, lo- I can appreciate that people like this movie. But my big problem with it is that it's so 
incredibly freaking depressing <laughs> that I can't get into a Christmas spirit when the only happy part is the last five minutes when that's the only time it's Christmas. Um, the last five minutes. There is and happy then. stuff building up all throughout. There's it has an ebb and flow <laughs> to it. All right. He he is he has a buildup of happiness when he meets he he meets Mary. Their date is one of the most beautiful romantic scenes but in any movie. But it's happy and then it's so sad. Like it's yeah. so you know like it's like life. It's an ebb and flow. Oh, ebb and flow of I happiness mean, and sadness. That's, that's a great way to describe life, but I don't want to be depressed for an hour and a half or two hours before the last good half I guess part at the very I, end. I, the last I, can, I can deal with a little bit of sadness if it if it helps inspire me that to get through the sadness in my own life, knowing that there could be a beautiful light at the end of the tunnel. I learned Ooh, something interesting oh. about this. Dropping bombs. <laughs> Truth bombs dropped <laughs> by Mega Magwitch. That's what I do. All right. I really love this movie. Like, I, it's, I don't know. I, I'm i a pretty pessimistic person who doesn't get too True. emotionally involved in films True. a lot of the time. But every year I almost cry when I watch It's a Wonderful Life because I just, <laughs> I don't know. It's very yeah. nostalgic and beautiful to me. I, I learned something interesting about this film, though. I was talking about it with somebody. I think it was one of the doctors I was with, but um, one of the doctors I was shadowing. But he's but uh, this movie. One of the reasons why it gained so much popularity is for a little bit lost copyright to whoever owned it, and so all the major stations played it a bunch because mm-hmm. it was like kind of free yeah. or whatever. I think yeah. eventually a lot like through lawsuits. They like said a derivative of the guy's work who had copyright of it, like made it so that movie still had copyright, so they had to pay him in the end. But there was a time where they were playing it for essentially free on these TV stations or something. They you got see that to- that guy had a really great face in his life, and then it was depressing when they were <laughs> playing it without him. And then it had a happy, uplifting message at the end when he got yeah. paid, oh. just like the movie. Oh, <laughs> it's that- such a perfect encapsulation of life. <laughs> yes. I think it is a fine. I can appreciate that other people think like to enjoy this classic tale, but I cannot accept it as a great. Cri- I also gr- think it. I, I think what I like about it most is I think it has my favorite uh, storytelling mechanic or device, which is the uh, seeing the world if you never existed. I think that's an interesting. That's like almost a on Christmas Carol level of interesting to me of visiting like. Things that not, you normally wouldn't get to see in your own life. It's the type of thing we all seeing imagine. Your own yeah. Not just seeing your own death, but seeing yeah. the the effects of you not the implications existing. of yeah. your okay. actions. Yeah. yeah, that's that's me. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> it's good. That's all I have left to say about. I won't that. say it's a bad choice. I will not say it's a bad choice. Um, I, I and I do feel that that we're all wrong because none of us said Die Hard, and that, that is, is a little upsetting. Absolutely. I, I know. I almost it, said it. I think <laughs> none of us said it because we all thought the other one, someone else would say it. We were a little worried. I yeah. would never that, say that hard. Kyle is Kyle staunch. He does it, not count it as a Christmas movie. I don't count it as a Christmas movie. It's, 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 like it's, like it's, it's like the Christmas whole party. movie's not about Christmas. And, the, and the whole, then there's like a little it's, bit it's of Christmas. It's at a story. Christmas party. Christmas music plays throughout. The, it's about a man thing. and his wife coming back together on Christmas Day. On Christmas. <laughs> they could have changed the holiday and it would be He's the got exact. got a teddy bear. No, no thing would have changed. No. They made four gonna... vacation <laughs> movies that weren't about Christmas, but we count Christmas vacation as Christmas, Christmas vacation movie. is all, every scene is about something you do around Christmas time I'm about Christmas. Saying, so even a Christmas story doesn't have that. You could change all of the things in it to other jokes and it's the same structure but Die Hard, everything in it is it's, focused it's, around Christmas. It's, it's just also an action. It's That's the whole point. Christmas. It's about Christmas. <laughs> it's about they were at a Christmas party. That's what it's about. Uh, oh, he <laughs> gets back. He comes home for Christmas. Wife. Yes, it's all about them coming together as a family on Christmas Day. All right, it's it's a great Christmas movie. You're ludicrous. I can't believe none of us said it because I think I think. You know that one was a viable option, Scott. I'm surprised you didn't say Gremlins. I think that's a great Christmas oh, movie. Oh, that's such a good. That's like the perfect between Christmas and Halloween. Like you got to watch Nightmare Before Christmas and Gremlins because yep. those are the ultimate. Just I, both. I agree. Both, they're yeah. they're perfect. They're perfect movies. They're both. Uh, you know, they're they've got Halloween themes. They've got Christmas uh, themes, uh, and they're both mostly Christmas movies. No matter what 
anyone says a nightmare before Christmas is a Christmas movie. Even, even one of the writers said it's a Halloween movie and I think he's wrong. Uh, it's a Christmas movie, but I'm just, I'm just surprised that none of us said some other things. And yet the choices that we all made are really not that surprising. It's, it's hard to really narrow it down. Cause there's even great modern ones like elf. That's yes. like a great, Christmas great movie. Movie. Great yeah, movie. Like uh, Christmas movies are interesting in that there's so many good ones and yet so many terrible ones. So I many guess, terrible. So I guess many when you ones. throw just a giant handful of darts at the board, <laughs> you're going to yeah. get a couple bullseyes. You're going to get maybe a few bullseyes. Um, but on that note, Kyle, are we yeah. going to watch another one? One more to end out? Oh, yeah. Do you want me to say it now? I think now would be a good today. a good time, and then we'll at the end of the chat we will definitely uh, put post it in the chat so that everyone can know can know what we're watching. Um, but certainly, I think now would be a good time to announce what is our final terrible Christmas movie Tuesday. Our final. Yes. This one was recommended by my wife. She watched it. She said it should be the next terrible Christmas movie. And let me tell you who it stars: Susan Sarandon, Paul Pilot. Walker. Mostly oh. excited about Paul Walker being in okay. this movie. Penelope Cruz, Alan Arkin, Ooh. and Ooh. an uncredited Robin Williams is in this movie. Then it's, then it's not starring, but it's he's in there. He is uncredited even. You can't I am even excited. On I am excited for Alan Arkin because <laughs> I love him. And I, think I know, that's... me too. This movie sounds like, you know, it's got a, a star studded cast. It's called Noel. That's the Noel. movie. It's on Netflix and it was made in two thousand four. And I have not seen it, but my wife has. And she says okay. that it qualifies as terrible. So I, uh, We'll see if it can beat the uh, the terribleness <laughs> that has... We have a pretty high bar for <laughs> yes. what qual- yeah, counts unfortunately, as a terrible movie right now. Unfortunately, we, we hit a Merry, ki- or Merry Christmas way too early. I feel yes. like that should have been that saved for us. <laughs> I don't think we knew just how bad that was going to be. And so no, at not. this point... Everything is a blessing that isn't as bad as Merry Christmas, and I don't know that we'll ever get anything worse than Merry Christmas. Definitely not. We can only hope. I don't know. Yeah, it's we can only (laughs) hope. So bad, so bad. What is left on our docket for? Oh man, we've got we've got a few things. Uh, While I double check our list, Scott, you had a great deal that you wanted to mention to us. Oh, that's right. I'm supposed to, I have to pitch Loot Crate, everybody. Loot Crate is a monthly geeky subscription service that if you go to www.lootcrate.com slash husky rate and enter promo code salsa, you can get 10% Mm. off your order. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, it is too late to get Loot Crate before Christmas. December 19th was the last day to get Loot Crate. But. You can still order a Loot Gaming this month. And the best part about that is Loot Gaming this month features an exclusive Destiny item of some sort. Ooh. Ooh. We know you yes, are. Yes, please oh, give me some of that Destiny. Yes. Destiny audience out there. And, for, and if there, for some reason, is someone in here who's like, well, heck, I still want Loot Crate even though I can't get it in December. The fun fact is next month's Theme crate is Origins, and there's going to be items from Superman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Marvel, and Nintendo. So definitely sounds like a pretty good thing. I wish I had a coupon for that. Yeah, Joe, yeah. promo code salsa. Promo code salsa. Oh, ten percent off. Promo promo code salsa. Loopcrate.com slash husky rate. Okay, sweet. Yes, there you go. There's your horrible plug for that. Now promo code salsa. There it is. Uh, mentioning Destiny, uh, I did want to congratulate. Well, congratulate you guys and congratulate us. Yes. Last week, last week, Husky Raid uh, won Movie of the Week once again yes, uh, with the Saw Something Weird in the Plaguelands. Yeah. The, uh, the Christmas video. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so we've got, we, we had a lot of help for that one. Yes, a we lot, did. I think, it is that the most, the most outside help? Oh, yes. absolutely, because it's the first time we've ever had to fill an entire uh, oh custom goodness. game of people. So yeah, people. that was yeah. that was that crazy. was that was intense. Um, and some you know a lot of a lot of questions uh, on the YouTube. How do you get nine people in patrol? All of that, and most of those have been answered. So those of you interested, go go check out that video. If you like Christmas music, and you like video games, and you like dancing. Mm-hmm. Saw something weird in the Plaguelands is yes. for you. 
by yes. far the most difficult video I feel like we've ever had to make. Off, Just yes, it was very stressful times. Lots of people to choreograph and to just to choreograph to get everybody online at the same time was enough <laughs> to make it incredibly difficult. But yes. yeah, we pulled you know, through. You know we persevered. When you're trying to get like a six man group for a raid team together, imagine double that and they're not even getting any rewards or anything yeah. out of it. So they're less motivated to get yeah. on, basically. <laughs> like yeah, just it is it was very hard. We, we so, had a lot of great help. Yes. We're so happy that we won the movie of the week. So all those people that helped us can get the emblem. We feel like that's the only way we can thank yeah. people. And I so do want to say, no, no, continue, Kyle. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, you are going to get that emblem, aren't you? I am. Yeah. I am. I uh, Cosmo sent out the email today at, verifying who all gets it. Um, uh, and so I'm excited about that. I can finally roll with the big boys and have and have that movie of the week emblem and and feel like uh, i've actually achieved something in my life that's all it takes Um, movie of the week i i define my life in two distinct periods pre-movie of the week emblem (laughs) and 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 post yeah no i and i do want to add just because i i glanced over at the chat um and there's a misconception that we had to load into the raid and then back out of the raid that is not even close to what happened. No, because um, we looked uh, at it as maybe a problem, viable option. The problem with going into the raid and then going over to the divide where we filmed the first half is that no public events will spawn mm-hmm. in the beginning part. And so you can't get that was a bikes. problem. There's no with, randoms that enter into the area either. Yeah. We've and no nice randoms with those. the second need three half of those. in the snowy part so we had to go in everyone just fanned out and started messaging people they found in the divide say hey can you have this person join your fire team and have him become the leader of your fire team and, and then you leave, leave your own so fire that's, team. That's, that's what we basically had to do and people were very kind and and we're so yeah. very thankful for those people that did that yeah oh so, there yeah. was so much help and, and and people who helped were extremely nice and rolled with it uh, a, a majority of them didn't know who we were which is no. expected. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> which is expected. That, Don't you that, know who we are? <laughs> I think that just shows that a lot of people in the community are are helpful and willing to help. And and it was just really nice. And we, we did meet some really cool people. Um, and with as much help as we needed, uh, we got to you know make new friends and do all of that fun stuff. Um, and it turned out, I think, into a really, really, really great video. And I'm, I'm glad that it was recognized. Um, as movie of the week, because I, I thought it was uh, spectacular. It was fun to be involved. It was my first one, probably my last one. I will never do that again. That was torture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was but, torture. but it was so much fun. Like and I love it. I'm person, so grateful. Tyler has has decided to quit after one, unlike yep. us. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> the smart thing to do. It is. That's the smart thing to do. If I'm going to run watched, a podcast. And if you've ever it. watched and you've thought, I'd love to do that, I'd love to take part in that. No. You don't want to. It's not <laughs> no. fun. It's much, much more satisfying no. to watch. Very much. Yeah. It oh, really yes. is. It's not. It it, so. Fun is not the word I would describe with it. When you can hear other people in your chat, you can hear their stomach growling because uh-huh. they haven't been able to go get food. Um, <laughs> you know, Those kinds of things just really kind of make, make the moment real for you. That this is make what it, it takes. This is what it takes to create content in Destiny. Yes. You starve we, uh, for your craft. Yeah, you starve for it. But yeah, Husky Raid has had a really good Christmassy month. We've had a lot of good yeah. Christmas videos. Out. I'm very happy about that. Um, I know. We that's our that's Cops. our mo. We like to you know just do nothing for a month and then slam you with four videos. Slam. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, Take a Destiny had, Cops. Take we've some had musical trial parodies. streams. We've had some musical parodies. Uh, oh, yeah. It's been fantastic. Uh, those of you who haven't, Carol of the Exotics is out there. It's available on iTunes. I think yes. Uh, yeah. CD Baby for sure. iTunes, CD I don't Baby. know if it's up yet. But. Uh, and then you've got uh, Walking in Fell Winter Wonderland, which yes. is fantastic. Uh, if you ever wanted to hear uh, Kyle Boisterous Biddy drink a lot of eggnog and <laughs> sing his heart out, that's the video for you. Yep. And yeah, speaking that's... of music, that was one of the other things we wanted to mention. And I think that will have to be our final topic for the evening yes. was uh, our favorite christmas song it is a time of of christmas music you hear it all the time people hate it people go crazy but everyone has at least one song that they're like i like that one 
that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's one that that's one that gets stuck in my head. That's one that I want to sing this is along a hard to. One. I can't relate to all of that because I start listening to Christmas yeah, I music in I know. October. A normal person. <laughs> I mean, a normal uh, person, not a crazy person. person, not someone who's insane. Yes. Um, yeah. No. But, uh, I'll, Scott, why don't you lead us off with this? I'll one? lead off this because is, I'm. I. This is, hard. I really, it's tough. this is a hard question, and it's especially because uh, I don't really like any poppy Christmas music that much. I gotta say, I don't have like a, a favorite artist version of a song but my favorite christmas music are songs that we used to sing in choir when i was in high school all and right. my all-time favorite song is actually carol of the bells which is what we parodied with carol the exotics i think it has the most fun uh melody to sing along to i like how all four of the like vocal parts go together it just yes. fills me with energy it's got a it's fast and fun to sing hark how the bells sweet silver bells just gets me yeah let's do it there you go yeah. i don't know that, that's really all all there is to say about it for me like all the other poppy songs just kind of blend together after a while and if there's no lyrics sometimes i just get tired of listening to the same christmas stuff over and over again but there's one thing i can always sing along to it's carol of the bells carol of the bells it is a beautiful yes. beautiful composition beautiful piece of work music because yeah. all the it, it just i don't know it's a, it's a great choral piece that it's been around for a long time and it's great and i really enjoy it as well yes what is your choice. favorite choice. tyler let's go backwards how we went last time you go you know I, I I do like Christmas music. I think it's fine. Um, it's not something I want to hear all the time, all day long. Um, but I, I like the older tunes. Um, that's, I don't know. That's I just like old Christmas songs. Bing Crosby's voice, Frank Sinatra. I could just listen to those old guys. Um, and so, crooners. the crooners, yeah. Anything but Michael Buble. <laughs> but I... Really enjoy the song, Baby, It's Cold Outside. Mm. Um, it's It's got, mm. you know, the duet. It's It's got uh, some good harmonies. Um, but I heard it at a, at a very <laughs> young age. Not I mean, not like crazy young, where I couldn't like realize what was really going on in that song. Um, but there are just certain lines in that song that are kind of some, throwaway some lines. dark undertones that, to that there song. There are a very, lot of dark <laughs> undertones dark to that song. <laughs> yes. Um, People, Maybe it's cold outside. Very, what's what's for, in this drink? I mean, things like yeah. that. I just <laughs> Maybe it's I mean, cold outside. I, you know, what's, people what's make a lot of jokes drink. about how that's like he's roofing her. I, I mean, I think it's pretty clear. It's, it's just, just like alcoholic drink. eggnog. Yeah, It's yeah. just like, a strong uh, drink. Yeah. No, there's no question about that. I mean, <laughs> She's it, being playful. It's creepy, but it's yeah, not. It's, yeah. it's, like, it's only creepy if he were like ugly, you know? He's handsome, though, so it's fine. He's a handsome He's a... He's, he looks like Dean Martin. Come on. He's yes, handsome. he does. Um, but I love that song. No, that song to me, like I could listen to that over and over and over on repeat, and that could be the only Christmas song I heard, and I'd be totally fine with that. I just love that song. And there are great renditions out there um, you know, that are good as well. And I thought what they did with it in Elf was really funny. I mean, it's just a, it's a good song. Baby, it's cold outside. I could listen to it all the time. That's, that's my, that is my Christmas song pick there it is a fairly recent rendition of that song that you may not have heard that you should look up is by seth mcfarlane and kobe calais seth mcfarlane released a christmas album a couple years ago and they did you just, that song. you just named two people that i would never want to ever hear sing ever again <laughs> okay why well, would i ever want to hear what is anything wrong with that's... seth mcfarlane has a fine voice you he's crazy. Yeah. He's got that, you know, family guy. He's got all his voices and everything. And I think I, I don't mind him as a singer. I think I he has a weird like, face, but I think his I voice is I do not like appealing. him. I do not like his writing. I do not I do not find him funny. So I don't want to listen to anything he does. <laughs> okay, well, then never mind. You won't enjoy that. Do not, not, that I appreciate this suggestion, known. Kyle. I think that's Get a out of here. to listen to. Yeah. You just ruined my favorite Christmas song. Ugh. I'm going <laughs> to pick a new one. Downer. Jeez. That's Right. Okay, Kyle, so what's your my favorite Christmas song? You're the expert, so give us your favorite. I have to do this in like parts. I have to start with what is my favorite Christmas song, and then pick the artist from that song, or else it gets too muddled and I can't decide. So my favorite Christmas song that I will always always say is my favorite Christmas song is "Oh Holy Night." I can't get over that song. It's so beautiful, so so Christmassy. Always 
um, grew up listening to different versions of it, hearing it being sung, um, singing it to myself in the shower. Oh, Holy Night is, it just captures, just captures uh, the, I don't know. It, it's it's good. It's epic. It's a great choral piece. You know, it's nothing new and poppy, like crazy going on. Um, my favorite version of A Holy Night is by a guy named David Phelps, which you guys know, but for our listeners who probably don't know who David Phelps is, if you've he's ever heard of... swimmer, right? He's yeah, swimmer. yeah, he's a swimmer. No, okay. yeah, so he's not even related, I don't think, to Michael Phelps, but David I Phelps is. is a classically trained singer who I think has the best voice who have, who's ever ex- existed out of anybody, but... Um, if you've heard of the Gaither vocal band, he's in that. That is oh, yeah. a band for old people, basically. <laughs> but they are a group of guys that do a cappella music. Anyways, he his version of it tops all the other ones. Second place would be, for me, Christina Aguilera. I love her stuff when it comes to Christmas stuff. Some people say it's too crazy. I think it's wonderful and really incredibly impressive how much control you could have with your voice. One person could have with their voice. Hers would be second, and then my third favorite rendition of that song would be um, Josh Groban, just because it's classic. He's got a cool voice. Not particularly my style, but since it's on the radio so much, it's just become ingrained a part there of it. There it is. So, All right. So and I that. named more than just one, but <laughs> Oh Holy Night. <laughs> Perfectly acceptable. Yeah, totally cheated. Stuck that. to one song, right? So, one song. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll allow it this time. <laughs> I'll allow but watch it. yourself. Yes. Watch out. Um, gentlemen, good picks. Good picks. Good picks. I like it. Good picks. I, I like, like it. it. That I think that's a good way to conclude our Christmas I extravaganza so. podcast. A lot of Christmas going on. A lot of holiday going on. A we can be holiday. all in, we can be all inclusive. So all many holiday. holidays. All the so holidays we... going on right now. <laughs> should we watch? Should we move on to questions and answers? I think we should. Yeah. And I, I saw a question earlier while I asked the chat now to ask any questions you have that you want us to answer, Christmassy or not, preferably serious. <laughs> um, I saw so do that now. But I saw a question earlier, which is, "What is your New Year's resolution?" Oh, boy. oh, wow! Which I think is a good question to ask you guys right now. So hit me with your New Year's resolutions. Mine's to lose like at least eighty pounds. Uh, yeah, you're fat. You're really I'm just clumping up. I'm just yeah. I think you need to get down it's, to a solid tough. forty pounds. A solid <laughs> forty pounds, and I think yes. I'd be good. Um, no, um, mine's extremely nerdy. I don't know that I should go. Well, I guess I should go first and get out of the way. My New Year's resolution is extremely nerdy, uh, and that's to read classics, like old books. Um, I, I mean, there's absolutely nothing interesting or funny about it um i just want to read more classics some that i have read some that i haven't but i do know that number one on the list will be great expectations because i haven't read it for years Ah, and hmm. i talk with you guys all the time and it's your namesake i need to go back and read and read that book learn your Uh, husky um, raid history (laughs) learn your history so so yeah, I, I I'm like to read more classics. It's I'm gonna basically just start one, and when I finish it, I'm gonna start another one. Probably be talking about them on Instagram or or something, someplace where people know that I'm boring and nerdy, not someplace yeah. where people hear you know listen to my opinion about things. But cool. that's right. my New Year's I like resolution. It. I like that a lot. I like that one a lot. Reading is an excellent an excellent one <laughs> to do. <laughs> Kyle, do you have a New Year's resolution that you want to hit anybody with? These are these resolution things are things I think of the day before the New Year, and then I forget them the day after. Naturally, uh, like most I people. Know, I know last year my resolution was to remember that I had a New Year's resolution two weeks after the <laughs> resolution was made. Yeah. I think I failed that one because I think I... Well, no, You're I, just I, remembering I now? Fail, I remember it, yeah, so... <laughs> Geez, that's a tough one. I think my resolution, this is something that I've been thinking about this week, but I need to be drinking more water. So that's really boring, but it because I was actually thinking Very about healthy. it and not trying that's to make something up. I mean, that's that's good. Good. I've been trying, you've been seeing me drinking water this whole podcast. So that's something I've 
trying to do more of is drinking more water because I've been super dehydrated. So that's a there's great, my resolution. Great resolution. Um, I already drink a crap ton of water, as everyone knows. I always have water bottle with me. Anyone who knows me. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a nerd, so I'm not going to say that I'm going to read more. But no, uh, I, I think would. I I think I have twofold. One is to maintain going to the gym regularly always a good nice. thing to keep on the mind of course. and then yeah. my second one is to finish destiny cop season two that's my new no. year's resolution what? <laughs> destiny to... cop season two no yes. no one wants to hear about that nobody cares chat. about nobody that. cares but that's cares. yes um, <laughs> <Boo. laughs> oh here's a uh, i I actually just see this question from Angus Beef here, which is, what is the funniest mistake you've ever made in Crucible? I saw that one. I got mine. It All right. a game <laughs> a while ago, a long time ago. A game of Trials of Osiris. It was round four, and we won round four, and I thought that we had won round five. And <laughs> so I popped my super to celebrate. <laughs> and then we had another round. Oh, and then no. We lost the next round, so... That's very similar to yesterday when we were playing, oh. and I thought we had uh, one, and somebody like self resed and I was just yeah, standing there and dabbing. You were dabbing up my orb. <laughs> and I was like, instead of hey, resing you, <laughs> hey, excuse me, Scott, uh, see that? There's yeah, self res over there. Yeah, just res me, please, <laughs> res me, and I'm just res sitting there. I know I oh. had to be a golden dab boy. That's the way that I roll, baby. Uh, oh. um, yeah, that's probably yeah, gonna funniest, go be mine. Yeah, funniest mistake. Um, funniest mistake was when I panic popped a super to clutch because anyone who's played with me knows I cannot clutch, and everyone who's played with me knows I panic super all the time. Like that's the only time I super unless Absolutely. it's PVE, and I'm like, I could I could tether all of those people right there. Okay. It's always a panic super, and the tether hits the wall. I'll pop blade dance and there will be no one around for a mile. I know. So popping a panic super and storm trancing everyone. And and I guess it's even more comical because I was playing as a warlock. So yeah, there's, there's that too. There we go. I have, I have one that I wrote down here, which is what do you want for Christmas that somebody asked, but I want to oh. expand. I don't know if we've ever talked about, I would like to make this twofold. What do you want for Christmas? And what's the best Christmas present that you've ever gotten? If we haven't oh, talked about that before, I can answer oh, yeah. what I want for Christmas very easily. And I know for a fact that my wife already bought me this, which is from retro USB. They make a, they do, they did an HDMI NES like uh, console that they just made like a customized one where you can play all of your regular Nintendo games and it hooks up HDMI to your TV 480p perfect beautiful picture quality uh, oh, spot nice. on absolute Fantastic. emulation i'm very excited to be able to play my nes games on an hd tv and have it not look terrible that's and very then, cool that's as cool. far as the best christmas present i ever got will also probably be christmas related or video game related which is an xbox 360 the year they came out when they were impossible to get and i thought it was absolutely there was no way i thought i was going to get one it was yeah. the end of christmas day we had already opened up christmas presents we'd gone to my grandparents and opened up stuff there and then we got home and my mom was like oh i got you one more thing for christmas oh, yes. like do you want to open this one more thing and i opened it and i was just like blew my mind she randomly was just driving around town she had tried to get one before and failed and she was driving around town and she saw a line starting to form in front of best buy and she just <laughs> got out of her car and went into the line and asked what it was for and they're like they think they have some xbox 360s and she was like the last person in line of like the 20 <laughs> people beautiful. that got it <laughs> it was great. And that's the story of why Scott never played Grand Theft Auto San Andreas because I got that <laughs> the same year and I did not play my PlayStation 2 for a while that's after funny. I got that. That's good. Oh, man. Um, like that. Man, uh, uh, Christmas. Yeah. How do you I don't want? know. I haven't. <laughs> fancy, fancy booze. I don't know. I, fancy booze. booze. I have oh, no right. idea what I want because um, I'm an adult. I can buy my own things. If I want something, I go out and get it. Well, if I want something, I ask my wife if I can go out and buy it, and then I go out and buy it. Yes, um, my fancy you booze. Want, you mean for your... vodka, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. The oh yes. Skull I'll buy you vodka. some forties oh, of malt oh, malt oh. liquor. Ooh, you can drink. You'll be that. my you'll be my best friend forever. <laughs> oh, um, fancy. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, I'm I'm hoping. I don't know. Maybe we'll see some video games on the horizon. Uh, a friend of mine has been talking about Titanfall two nonstop, um, and he compared it to Halo Reach. And Ooh, that's a bold that's, comparison. That was a. I, that's what I told him. I said that's a bold comparison. Okay. He said. He said play play styles different, but the leveling up and the you know cosmetics and things like right, that much right. better, much better than Halo Five. So I don't know. We'll see that. I'm I'm hoping Final Fantasy fi- uh, t- uh, Fifteen shows up because that'd be fun to play. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to check it out. I'm probably not gonna love it just because it's not turn based, but uh, you can't love everything. So yeah. Exactly. Um, I don't know. Favorite Christmas present ever. <sighs> Was it your banjo? That's my guess. Did you get that? It was not. I did get that for Christmas. <laughs> it was God. not my banjo. Um, I think, yes, the Wii was a Christmas present. So All I'm right. going to go that mm. that off the top of my head, that was that one Wii of the That Wii has gotten better, a lot of use. That Wii, that yes. Wii has started arguments. It's ended arguments. It's made <laughs> enemies and it's created friends. Um, you played that so Wii I, before your the day of your wedding when you got married. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that it's been there, through we a were lot. all were down there. We were swapping oh through. Gosh. I mean, that's 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 a that was a good present. Probably probably one of the presents that stuck around the longest when you really think about it. So all yeah. Right. Good. Kyle. Good answer. That's great. Uh, what do I want for Christmas? Okay, so my my wife asked me this yesterday, I think, and she's I just, just asking you yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So oh, we we no. we. we we don't oh, we don't oh. get like big presents. At least this year, we're not getting like huge presents for each other. We usually get the ornaments from this place called Bronner's in Frankenmuth that we go to. But we got snowed out of going on that trip, so Ooh. usually ah. we go and get our own ornaments for each other, and that's like our gift to each other, and then maybe do some other things. But this year we're not. So she was asking me what I want for Christmas, and I had no idea. And then we went to Barnes and Noble today, and I saw a couple things that. I think would be cool to own. One is the board game Small World. If you've ever played Small World, it's it's like kind of a risk game, but it's like like fantasy, I guess. I don't know. Like you can be a a flying gnome or a or like a mountain. Yeah, you know, like like you you. It's a really cool game because there's all these classes and then there's all these abilities and they always change. It's all random. Anyways, that would be a fun thing to have. And okay. then, um, I think it's too late though. Like it's like what four or five days before Christmas. Like, yeah, I don't know idea what know. I'm getting at this point, but you never that, know. And then the avatar, of the last airbender graphic novels I've always wanted, but they're Ooh. too expensive. And so, um, now I know cool what to, have, to get. Kyle so. is the avatar, <laughs> yeah. the last Stand airbender. Ooh. Yeah. The graphic novels, which, um, I've always wanted to read and stuff, but they're, they're all like hardback 45 bucks. And I just can't convince true. myself to spend the money on them. But I was thinking of those two things. That would be fun. But my all-time favorite Christmas gift is also video game related. It's the one that sticks out the most to me, and it's my PS2. When nice. we're when, all a bunch of nerds. That's a good yeah, choice. Consoles are a good choice. Yeah. But I I feel bef- feel like before that I never got a good like a big gift for Christmas. And then then my parents were asking, and I was like saying PS2 would be so cool. And my mom was like, you know, we don't do big gifts, you know, for, you know, (laughs) you know, like we don't do that kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, I know it will, it'll be good. I like, I love Christmas. And then, and then I opened a box on Christmas day and it was a PS2 game. And I was like, what What am I going to do with this? I was like, what's that? Cool, a Frisbee. I was like, I was like, and then, and then I opened it and it was my PS2. And I believe I hugged it and it was, you know, (laughs) that makes sense. That was a little weird back then, but but that, that was sense. that was very exciting for me to get a PS2. So good. That was my best Christmas gift ever. Nice. Well, this was a Beautiful. nice way to end the chat before nice Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Uh, before we go and celebrate the holidays, um, chat. Thank you for joining us tonight for what has been yes. Husky Radio episode nineteen. Uh, thank you for your wonderful questions. Uh, we plan on being back next Tuesday, same place, same time. Uh, any last words from you guys? Um, I'd like to add to follow us on Twitter at 
Husky Raid of guys course. and on Instagram. And I want to say, if you're listening to this, you should leave a comment on the video with what your favorite Christmas present of all time was. Yeah, and Ooh, we'd I love like it. To, we'd like to read them. I love it. Yes. We're gonna yeah. tweet. We're gonna tweet out a couple of things we talked about. Like, vote on whose Christmas movie pick was the best. Yeah, probably oh. that'll be a tweet. There These we go. Be a poll on Twitter. So go there, and we'll tweet it out just as this ends, and you can vote for which one you can vote Ooh, was the best movie but also and also watch noel for next week for yes we are watching noel on netflix we are watching noel we will be chatting about it see how horrible it is where it compares to merry christmas if it's worse if it's better i don't know how it could be worse but we will definitely be making that comparison so thank you all for listening thank you all for watching, and we will see you next week. Yep. Goodbye. Later. Yeah, yeah. Episode 19 out. 19 out.